From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out all the differences between Heinz products in the UK and the US. This is Food Wars. Heinz is best known for its ketchup. In the UK, it comes in the following bottle sizes. 250 grams, 342 grams, 460 grams, 570 grams, 700 grams, 910 grams, or our largest size, a 1.35 kilogram bottle. I did also find a one kilogram bottle online and I ordered some, but unfortunately it was stolen from the lobby of our building. So just imagine it there. Heinz ketchup in the US also comes in a variety of sizes. Down at the end here, we got the 14 ounce bottle, then we go up to a 20 ounce bottle. We have a 32 ounce bottle, 38 ounce bottle, and the big juggy guy, 114 ounces. What? This can't be for like a family. I guess if you just like dipping your food and your fingers directly in there. Nice. Apparently one serving size for ketchup in the UK is 15 grams, which means that this bottle contains 90 servings. We're gonna measure that out and see if it seems realistic. So according to Heinz in the UK, that's one serving of ketchup. That maybe looks like a bit less than what I might normally have with my meal if I was having, say, chips or something else which required dipping, but not too bad. The US serving size is one tablespoon, which Heinz says is 17 grams of ketchup. Let's take a look at that right now. Gotta do this, you wanna get that ketchup water that comes out first. That's the worst thing in the world, you don't do this, you get that ketchup water, it's like, well, that's ruined. Oh, it's like, oh, 10, 13. This is like when you're getting gas, you wanna get the exact dollar amount. I've been training for this my whole life. <laughs> Yay! 17 grams of ketchup. That means that this 114 ounce jug contains 190 servings of this right here. That seems, that seems like a reasonable amount. Here are all the Heinz products from the UK that you won't find in the US. We finally have way more than America. Come on. And here are all the Heinz products in the US you won't find in the UK. Do they have more than us? I feel like we have more. Let's find out. In the UK, we can get two exclusive varieties of ketchup. We can get ketchup with 50% less added sugar and salt, as well as ketchup with no added sugar and salt. And these are exclusives here in the US because we have them singularly a no salt added and a no sugar added. Some of the exclusive ketchups we have are jalapeno ketchup. Ooh, a sriracha flavored ketchup. Ooh. Not bad, but just tastes more garlicky than anything else. Hot and spicy Tabasco ketchup. Also, we have ketchup with a blend of veggies. Kids approved, I mean, I'm assuming this is to trick kids into eating more vegetables. I think it's better than none, right? I'm curious. It tastes exactly like ketchup, which is good, right? I'm trying to trick kids into eating vegetables. This is it. You can also get simple tomato ketchup with no artificial sweeteners and tomato ketchup sweetened only with honey. Not available at the time of filming this segment. What the UK might lack in exclusive ketchup options, we make up for with our mayonnaise. Over here we can get light mayonnaise. The existence of light mayo implies the existence of a forbidden dark mayo. Just a heads up. We have a vegan mayo option. Our other vegan options include this vegan chili mayo, as well as this vegan mayo slash garlic aioli. Then we have some seriously good mayo options, including this garlic and caramelized onion one, as well as this rich and creamy truffle mayo. I don't like how they've had to create a fancy brand of mayo. I feel like nobody should be too good for mayo. If you think you're too good for mayo, you're wrong. The Heinz website also advertised a lemon and black pepper mayo, which unfortunately I couldn't find anywhere. The mustard options you get in the US exclusively are the 100% natural spicy brown mustard, a Heinz 100% natural honey mustard, and of course, organic yellow mustard. Heinz sells two types of mustard in the UK, a mild mustard and a honey mustard, but they were strangely hard to track down. I did find the mild mustard online, but that was also one of the things stolen along with our ketchup, so enjoy that as well. Barbecue sauces, USA, we love our barbecue. We love our barbecue sauces. The first one is the Carolina mustard style, sweet mustard barbecue sauce. I'm like stoked for this. When these, when these arrive, I was like, hell yeah, I wanna try these sauces. Ooh. Fantastic, yep. We got the Carolina vinegar style, sweet and tangy barbecue sauce. I like this one too. There's a Kansas City style sweet and smoky barbecue sauce. I could not get at the time of filming this, but I was able to get the original sweet and thick barbecue. I mean, barbecue sauce is like the best thing ever. Well, they weren't kidding, that is thick. The Texas barbecue sauce, bold and spicy, just like the state. Also thick. Oh my goodness. Either this one or this one. These are the two best ones. I can't decide, Carolina or Texas. 
We only have two barbecue sauce options in the UK, a sweet barbecue sauce and a classic barbecue sauce. I'm not sure how it compares to the original sweet option in the US or how they've managed to kind of isolate those two flavors. I don't think like original slash classic can be a flavor in itself. Vinegars, let's go. Distilled white vinegar, 5% acidity. What does it mean by 5% acidity? Great question. Well, you see, I have no idea. Uh, then we also got the Heinz Gourmet Malt Vinegar. We also have a salad vinegar. Gourmet salad vinegar, yum. We have a gourmet tarragon vinegar. Ooh. All natural apple cider vinegar, a organic unfiltered apple cider vinegar with the mother. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Uh, we have a Heinz all natural multi-purpose extra strength vinegar with a 6% acidity. And of course, the Heinz imported balsamic vinegar from Modena. While in the UK, Heinz just has malt vinegar, which I couldn't find today, but it does go great on your fish and chips. We have got so many gravies. Gravy, as I know it, you pour it on mashed potatoes and sometimes turkey. It's like a brown sauce, sometimes a white sauce. You can also get biscuits and gravy for breakfast, which is fantastic. That sauce is white. We got a lot of different variations of gravy. I can't be the US gravy ambassador. All right, I didn't ask for this job. At no point in the interview, there was like, well, you know a lot about gravies, right? And if I said I did, I lied, all right? <sighs> Please revoke my gravy ambassador status. And I'm sorry for deceiving the people of Food Insider. Heinz homestyle gravy with mushroom. There's mushrooms in it. I see gravy twice a year, once at Thanksgiving and once when I go to Jollibee. And then you got the savory beef gravy, bistro au jus. Signature gravy, rich and savory, made with roasted turkey. Let's go. We got the country style sausage gravy. This goes, yes, yeah, see, he's pouring it on biscuits. It's a breakfast, it's a breakfast gravy. It comes with a country sausage and hash browns recipe. Joe, I don't know what that is, but that is not gravy. That looks horrific, especially that creamy stuff. Like, why is it white? Gravy should never be white. Classic chicken gravy. This is like not white. It's more of like a khaki colored gravy. Now that isn't even close to the amount of gravies you can get in the US. I went to several grocery stores, several, looking for these gravies, as many as I could find. So I'm gonna rattle off the list. Signature rich and savory gravy with real roasted chicken, the home style brown with onion gravy, Heinz home style classic chicken fat free gravy, home style pork gravy, and last but not least, home style savory beef fat free gravy. British gravy is either made from the juices and drippings of a roast dinner or made by adding water to some gravy granules. Not a Heinz brand, just a good brand. I like this though. Thankfully, we don't have any of that American gravy in the UK, but what we do have is salad cream or salad queen as it's currently called in honor of the queen's platinum jubilee. It's just what Liz would have wanted, I'm sure. Now, Americans, don't be alarmed by salad cream. I know the name sounds a little off-putting, but it's actually not that bad. It's basically just mayo that they've added some kind of vinegar and also a little bit of sugar to. So it's kind of like a tangy mayo, which you can add to your salads or to your sandwiches. I feel like with Americans, some of the things that they pass off as salads, they have no right to criticize a salad cream. You ever seen, I think it's like ambrosia salad in America, which is basically just loads of mayo anyway. Pickles and relish. I think relish is just okay. Not a fan of pickles. Uh, the hot dog relish, why is it this color? Why is it this color? If I got a hot dog and they put this relish on it, I'd be like, yeah, you're making it again without that. Dill relish, right? Just straightforward from dill pickles, or they added dill to it, what do you think? Burger fans, get yourself a hamburger dill chips. Other pickle stroke relish options that we have here in the US are genuine, whole, original sour dill pickles, spicy garlic chips with garlic and red pepper, sweet and spicy chips with crushed red pepper, sweet gherkins. We don't have Heinz pickles in the UK, but we do have Heinz pickle. This is an important distinction to make in the UK, is if you ask for just pickle singular on your sandwich, you'll end up with this. This is an iconic British condiment, which is either served as part of your plowman's lunch or on a sandwich like a cheese and pickle. It's a thick condiment made with some cooked vegetables like carrots, swedes, cauliflower, and onions, all served in this kind of thick, tangy sauce. We also have Heinz piccalilli in the UK. It's sort of similar to Plowman's Pickle in that it's a spreadable condiment with some crunchy cooked vegetables inside, but it's also different because it's got the mustard base, which gives it this distinctive yellow color. I will say it's kind of an old person's condiment. I don't think you'll really see anyone under the age of like 50 or so in the UK rushing for the piccalilli, but it is tasty. Next up, Heinz US offers a bunch of specialty sauces. Heinz 57 sauce, real talk. I've never heard of this before this video. It says that it adds zest to chicken, steak, or pork. Isn't gonna sound like a weird thing to say, but doesn't this look really good? So. Let's find out. First, the sniff test. I like how it smells. I like how it smells. Oh, 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 oh. 
There we go. Yeah, that's really good. I can't place my finger on exactly what it is. Ah, secret blend of premium herbs and spices. Oh man, it's like liquid KFC apparently. It's like, like a mustard base, but like a sweeter and zestier like punctuation to it. Ooh, Heinz 57 chili sauce. I gotta say, Heinz, don't be putting this great on burgers and fries. Don't tell me to put my sauce on. I'll brush my teeth with this if I want to. You can't stop me. Yeah. Mmm. That would be great on my burgers or and or fries. The Heinz original cocktail sauce. I'm not opening this. You know, I'm shrimp. You get it. Cocktails. I have no opinion on cocktail sauce. Worcester sauce. Couldn't get my hands on it. But I do think that's weird that Heinz also makes his own wor Worcester sauce? Worcester? Worcester. Is that right? Now, they also own Leah and Perrins. So, are they competing against themselves? I don't think so. I think they just bought it because they're Heinz. You think like, I'm not getting the Heinz Worcester sauce. I'm getting the Leah and Perrins. That joke's on you. Heinz gets paid on all that. Firstly, that should be speciality sauces with the extra I. And secondly, in the UK, we also have a range of speciality condiments. We have an American style smoky baconese sauce and also an American style burger sauce. Do these actually look or feel American to you, Joe? Yes, that looks like sauce that we potentially have. Then we have a Thai style sweet chili sauce. British people love Thai sweet chili sauce. I don't know where that association came from, but I'm not even playing because it's delicious. Then we have a Turkish style garlic sauce. I think this is kind of a nod to the Turkish style kebab shops, which are so popular in the UK. Drunk kebab is one of the best pleasures in life. Speaking of drunk food, we also have Heinz curry sauce in the UK. You don't have to be drunk to enjoy it, but it does help. Cheesy chips and curry sauce is a big British hit. Next up, we have a spiced pineapple chutney, as well as a North African style spicy kebab sauce made with chili and onion. Why doesn't ketchup and mustard come in the same bottle? We all exclaim to the heavens. Apparently, Heinz has a whole thing called sauces mixed by Heinz, because God forbid you just do it yourself. Some of these, I mean, I didn't even know you wanted them together to begin with. Who knows how they figured this out? Honey Racha, what do you think that is? Surely you watching at home understand the value of having a bottle of sriracha and a bottle of honey. The amount of times you mix them must pale in comparison the amount of times you don't need to mix them. Actually, that, that's pretty good though. <laughs> then we got mayo chip. <laughs> yeah, mayo and ketchup together at last. Oh God, nope. Even by these standards, it's really bad. Up next, crunch, crunch. Just call it ranch and ketchup. Two things I never combine anyway. Oh, there's like chunks of shit in it too. Uh, this one, okay. Both the ketchup connection ones, this tastes almost exactly like ranch and the ketchup mayo one. Was it mayo chip? Tastes just like mayo. Buffalo ranch. I'll concede, buffalo and ranch in the same thing. I understand this one. I, oh, that was the bottle, not me. That was me. I went from hating this to loving it in like two seconds. This might be genius. I'm taking this one. This is actually pretty good. And this would go really good on any potatoes or fries, of course on chicken. Oh my God, with popcorn chicken, this would be ideal. Oh my God, mayo must. This one works just fine. You know, it's like, it tastes like a creamy, a creamy uh, mustard. You can also get yourself <coughs> a mayo racha sauce. And, oh God. And this last one, come on guys. Sweet cat chili sauce, which I'm assuming is sweet ketchup and chili sauce. <sighs> we only have one pre-mixed sauce option in the UK and it's this, saucy sauce. I'm not sure why they've gone with this name instead of mayo chup, because as far as I can see, it is just mayo and ketchup combined. Another thing worth touching upon is HP versus A1 sauce. The great HP A1 divide. I mean, that's literally like a, a, a rip through the Atlantic Ocean. It's a sauce that's meant to be on meat, mostly steak and hamburgers. In the UK, Heinz produces another iconic condiment, HP sauce. It's a sauce which is also designed to be enjoyed with meats like sausages or on your bacon sandwich. I'm more of a ketchup on the bacon sandwich guy, but you do you. You have to understand that when A1 sauce dropped, it was that time in the 80s where marketing was so crazy effective. Obviously there's no internet, so we all watch the same five to 10 channels and you couldn't look at a TV without seeing an A1 steak sauce commercial from like 1985 to 1989. Ta-da, A1 steak sauce. And it was on the table and we, and we just put it on and like, you know, licking the knife like, oh yeah, A1, look at us, we got A1. This shit is nasty. I'm not nostalgic for it. I don't like it. I don't put sauces on meats like steak. Oh God, it's so, Tangy, HP sauce is better than this. I forgot to bring my bottle. 
To give you an idea of just how British this source is, HP actually stands for Houses of Parliament, as you can maybe infer from the fact that they are right there on the label. HP Source is part of a subcategory of sources in the UK which are called brown sources. While it might not sound very appetizing, it's really popular in the UK, as evidenced by the fact that it's not even the only brown source Kraft Heinz produces. We also have Daddy's Brown Source. Yes, this is a real thing. It wouldn't be a Heinz episode unless I talked about baked beans. In the UK, Heinz doesn't just manufacture condiments, but also an enormous range of canned goods. The most iconic of these is probably Heinz beans. I'd say Heinz is probably the gold standard for baked beans in the UK. As you may know, British people love to eat baked beans with a range of dishes, including a full English breakfast, sausage mash and beans, fish fingers, chips and beans, and of course, beans on toast. Baked beans, so I'm gonna say right off the bat, gonna show my Americanness right now. Beans for breakfast sounds absurd. Now granted, we have <laughs> sausage gravy on potatoes and chicken fried steak. So I know that our breakfasts are very questionable. Beans for breakfast, like beans, on, beans on toast? No, 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 no. No thank you. My only issue with Heinz beans is the stupid beans with a Z spelling. I think it was part of some marketing campaign from back in like the 80s or the 70s and they just never let it go. But I will say British beans are generally served in quite a sweet tomatoey sauce, which does go with quite a few dishes. I feel like American beans are different. Yeah, beans like here, like they're baked. They usually come in like a, 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 a barbecue sauce or a barbecue-like sauce. You get them at barbecue places, right? Like picnic food, right? Beans aren't even the only canned goods that Heinz sells in the UK. They have a huge range of soups, canned pastas, and more. Heinz soups are pretty highly regarded in the UK. I like the big soups because I feel like a standard can of soup isn't enough for an actual meal. But some of the other flavors are really good. The classic tomato can't really be beaten. Heinz canned pastas don't have quite the same reputation, but I will fight to the death to defend the beef ravioli. I ate so much of that growing up and I still have such a strong nostalgic attachment to it that if anyone criticizes it, you know where to find me. And there are even more food options from Heinz in the UK, including jars of pasta sauce, salad dressings, and veggie burger options. Heinz covers so many product areas in the UK that they even have a huge range of baby foods. I picked up this peach, mango, banana, and apple one because it sounds delicious, and I am technically older than four months, so I think I can eat this. Here's everything in Heinz ketchup in the US. Tomato concentrate from red ripe tomatoes, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup, corn syrup, salt, spice, onion powder, natural flavoring. Here's everything on the ingredients list for ketchup in the UK. Tomatoes, spirit vinegar, sugar, salt, spice and herb extracts contain celery and spice. There are a few obvious differences between the two lists. The spices listed are slightly different with ours explicitly containing onion powder. That's not to say the UK's doesn't also contain onion powder as it may just fall under the spice and herb extracts subcategory in the UK. Our label also explicitly lists celery as an ingredient, largely for allergen purposes. In the US, our ketchup is sweetened with both corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup, while the UK, they just sweeten theirs with sugar. Americans put corn syrup in absolutely everything because it's cheaper for food producers to use when compared to real sugar. That's because corn farmers in the US receive huge subsidies from the government, more than 116 billion since 1995, leading to massive corn production. We also have tariffs which make it more expensive to import real sugar. There isn't really a health difference when comparing the consumption of sugar and corn syrup, but there can be a discernible taste difference. For example, American Coca-Cola is flavored with high fructose corn syrup, while Mexican Coke is flavored with sugar. When comparing the tastes of the two, some people said that the American version was an even sweeter taste, but also had a slightly chemical flavor. Are there any other ingredients to look out for across Heinz product range? In the US, we have pickles that contain polysorbate 80, a chemical used in foods like pickles and ice cream as an emulsifier and a solubilizer. A solubilizer. Solubilizer? Solubilizer. The bad news is that studies have suggested it can cause colon cancer in mice. You know what that means. Give me them dancing rats. Also in the US, our Heinz colors its sausage gravy with titanium dioxide. This is a white dye most commonly used in paints and varnishes. Delicious. Its use in food is controversial. Studies show it has harmful effects on animals during scientific tests, leading the European Union to ban it from use in foods starting in August of 2022. Due to Brexit, however, the UK is no longer bound by EU rules about food. Unfortunately for Brits and Americans, our respective food safety authorities have actually disagreed with the EU ruling, so we may still see titanium dioxide popping up in our food. Here's everything in 100 grams of original ketchup in the UK. 102 calories, 0.1 grams of total fat, of which 0 grams are saturates, 23.2 grams of carbs, of which 22.8 grams are sugars, and 720 milligrams of sodium. Here's everything in 100 grams of ketchup in the US. 117 calories, no fat, 29.4 carbs, and of that, 
23.5 grams of that is sugar, and the sodium is 941 milligrams. Other than the trace amounts of fat in the UK ketchup, the US stats are higher in every category. Now these stats are for 100 grams of ketchup, which is roughly five times the recommended serving size, which is one tablespoon. That's still a surprising amount of sugar and sodium. Just 100 grams of ketchup in the US contain almost half your daily sugar allowance, as well as 40% of your daily sodium. It's also worth checking out the serving size because companies have a habit of underestimating these. Let's bring back the serving size we measured earlier. I still think that's a little bit smaller than what I'd normally add to my plate, so I'm gonna add some more to it and then figure out the stats for what I think is a realistic serving size. I don't think that's unrealistic. Judge me if you want. That's actually more than double the recommended serving size, coming in at around 31 grams. Let's figure it out. Okay, so if I had fries, I'd probably go about that long, right? This is 20 grams. Ah, uh, that seems so bad. And also, I don't, I don't think I'm eating, I don't think I'm eating all that. I don't think all of this is getting my body. I think this would be smeared around and... So here in America, not concerned. This one's for you, Papa. I like pickled onion. I like pickle lily. Pickled cabbage is all right with bubble and squeak on a Friday night. I like tomatoes, but what I do prefer is a little bit of I come, you come, we come, a little bit of cucumber. Oi! Ta-da! Imagine when that dropped in like 1920. People would have lost their minds.